Hi everyone. Today we're going to play Name That Tune and we're going to do it in conjunction with a great way to practice. Um, tell me what this tune is. It almost sounds a little jazzy. What I'm doing here is I'm practicing in, in block practicing. What I actually just played was this piece. this have to do with making my performance of this better um, and what I'm doing is I'm playing every note in the same hand position at the same time so um, this is all one hand position and what I did was I practiced it by just playing that and then this I played it all at the same time now, what's the point of this? The point is, is that it puts my fingers over the right place at the right time. And unless there's like an earthquake and the piano starts shaking, there is no way I'm going to be able to miss any of these notes because my hand was trained how to cover them before I started. I'm covering everything within one hand position at the same time and then playing it. And you'll notice that uh, my right hand, the lowest note is an F, and within that hand position, the highest note is an F. Now, this is really standard. There's an octave separating um, the, the hand, but it's the internal part of the hand that changes. And this is what I sometimes refer to as the geometry of the hand, because I can play potentially in this position, or this position, or this position, or this position. I can keep moving up um, with a, a lot of variable on the inside of the hand, uh, but the outside often is covered about by about an octave. By doing this, um, I can make sure everything is covered before I start, um, and then when I go to the new position, I'm, I'm thinking uh, of long-term goals um, by covering everything that might be needed within that single hand position. So you'll notice the first hand position looks a little bit like this on the overhead camera, and my second finger is pointed at about, oh, 11.30. When I come down to the next part, it's going to look like this. And now you'll notice my second finger is pointed more at about 10.30. Um, let's see where it winds up for the next one. Um, <laughs> maybe 11 o'clock. Um, anyway, there's small changes within that. Uh, but if I only play it slowly, um, I might not be able to cover everything at that time because I'm thinking so note to note. But when I can think long term like this, um, it will help a lot. I have heard that Sviatoslav Richter, uh, people would listen to his practicing, and even pianists would say, I couldn't even tell who he was playing. Um, it didn't even sound like music. I've always been fascinated with that idea because I wondered what he was doing. Um, I never got a chance to see Richter play live. He had stopped performing in America um, by the time I would have seen him. But I would have paid good money, I think, not just to see him, but to listen to him practice for a few hours because I'm convinced that he was doing a lot of this block kinds of practice. Um, and it's not a surprise that he did not miss a lot of notes um, that he could learn things very quickly. So try this block practicing. Um, you're gonna cover everything within a single hand position at the same time and then just get from one position to the next. Now you'll notice that when you change hand position, you're probably gonna look a little bit like this. Wait, where does it go? Uh, uh, and that's the kind of thing we're trying to sand out through that. So you want to make sure that the transition is as smooth as possible with no, uh, what I call finding, which looks a little bit like your hands might be lost. So 